Today we're going to look at congruence and quadrilaterals. So we're going to just have a look through uh, the, the basic quadrilaterals, the regular quadrilaterals, and have a look at their different properties and see how we might use those uh, properties to our advantage or see how we might test for those properties and, and find out more about each of these different uh, regular quadrilaterals. So the first we're going to look at is a parallelogram. Any parallelogram has, uh, is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. So we've got these two sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel. Um, the opposite angles are equal. So this angle here is equal to this angle here and that angle here is equal to that angle there. The opposite sides are equal. So this side and this side are equal. This side and this side are equal. And the diagonals bisect each other. Bisect. The word bisect means to cut evenly in two. So this line here cuts through this line at exactly the middle point. So this point here is the midpoint of this line and it's the middle point of this line as well. It cuts them directly in two. So uh, that means that this length here is equal to this length here and this length here is equal to this length here. So from here to here is the same as from here to here and from here to here is the same from here to here. Looking at a rhombus, a rhombus is a special parallelogram. So all of the properties that a parallelogram has, a rhombus has too. A rhombus has opposite sides that are equal, a rhombus has opposite uh, angles that are equal, and a rhombus has diagonals that bisect each other. But it has a special property, that means it's got all equal sides. So not only does it have all of these properties of a parallelogram, but it also has equal sides, the diagonals bisect each other at right angles. That means that if we're looking at, at the bisection point, so the, the, the cutting point, where they're cut both evenly in two, the point in the middle, each of these angles around here is a right angle. So each of those is 90 degrees. Each of those is 90 degrees. And the diagonals bisect the interior angles. So these are the interior angles here, 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 and here. They're interior because they're inside, so they're interior angles in, in the shape, and they are bisected as well. That means that each of those angles is cut directly in two. That means that this angle here is the same as this angle here, because so, it's cut, this big angle is cut evenly in two. The same with this angle, this one, and that one. They're all cut evenly in two. So that's a rhombus. Looking at a rectangle, a rectangle is a parallelogram as well. So that means, once again, all of the properties of parallelogram apply to it. The only difference between a parallelogram and a rectangle is that all the interior angles are 90 degrees. So we can see here that all the interior angles are, are right angles, they're at 90 degrees. The diagonals uh, for a, a rectangle are equal in length. So this length here is equal to this length here. So that's the, that's the special properties of a rectangle. Once again, all of these, all the opposite angles are equal, the opposite sides are equal, the diagonals bisect each other, they do, they cut right in the middle there, uh, they cut in half evenly. The properties of a square, a square is a rectangle, so all of the properties that apply to a rectangle apply to a square as well. And because that a rectangle is a parallelogram, all of the properties that uh, apply to a parallelogram apply to a square as well. A re this, this is a special rectangle that has all sides the same. All sides are the same length. The diagonals bisect each other at right angles. So each, each of these, the angles in the middle here, are at 90 degrees. All of these angles are at 90 degrees of where they are bisected, of, of where the diagonals are cross. So, uh, looking at a trapezium next, a trapezium isn't really related to any of the other, um, the other uh, regular quadrilaterals. It's a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. It doesn't really have any special properties um, apart from those parallel sides. A kite, a kite once again isn't related to any of the other quadrilaterals very, very much. Uh, but it has, it's a quadrilateral with two pairs of equal sides, and the two pairs of equal sides are next to each other. 
So one pair of opposite angles are equal. So uh, these opposite angles aren't equal. This one's clearly bigger than this angle here. Um, but this angle and this angle are the same. So those two angles are equal. This angle here and this angle here are equal. The diagonals bisect each other at right angles. So once again, right in the middle here, they're all right angles, all at 90 degrees to each other. And one of the diagonals is bisected by the other. You can see that this diagonal here is cut, is cut skewed from the middle. It's not bisected. Okay, it's not bisected, it's not cut directly in two. But this uh, diagonal here, this diagonal, has been cut directly in two. It's been cut so that this amount, this length here, this part of the diagonal, is equal to this part of the diagonal. So it, it has been bisected. This diagonal hasn't been bisected though. Now, the reason that we're looking um, that we're looking at the diagonals, especially, is you, is you, you can see that every quadrilateral we can cut up, we can cut up into triangles. So here we can have a look at this triangle here, and look at this triangle here, and these triangles as well. And we can look for congruent triangles. And if we can find congruent triangles, triangles that are the same, we can actually find out more about, find these properties out about quadrilaterals. So you can see we've cut this trapezium up into triangles, this uh, square up into triangles, and we can have a look for congruent triangles that we've, that we've uh, sliced our, our quadrilaterals up into and, and get some information, some more information about our, our uh, shapes, our quadrilaterals from that. And this, is, this has got a great advantage when we're looking at building, constructing um, and making artworks to have a look at tessellations and things like that to, to make very, very interesting um, architectural um, and artistic features in different, uh, different areas. So having a look at an example, it's quite a tough example, um, we're looking to prove, so to make a proof that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other and make sure we give reasons. So to prove means that we actually have to uh, find reasons for and then and, and come up with a conclusion based on a logic, logical reasoning. So we've got a diagram of a, of a parallelogram here, we've called it A, B, C, D, and we've called the, the very centre, um, the midpoint of the diagonals E. Now you can see we have cut it up into, using those diagonals, uh, we have cut it up and, and uh, divided it up into triangles. So we can use those triangles to have a look and try and find uh, triangles that are congruent and that will uh, allow us to prove that these, that these lines bisect each other. So in order to do that, what we're going to try and do, if we, can, if we can prove that these two sides are the same, these two lengths are the same here, so this length is the same as this length, and this length here is the same as this length here, then we can prove that, that we will have proven that these are bisected, they're cut evenly in two, if we can prove that they're equal, if they're cut into equal bits. So firstly, let's look at the angles. Let's have a look at the angles and see and, and see um, for, for these two triangles. We're going to look at this triangle here, triangle uh, A, B, E, and triangle uh, C, D, E, to have a look and see if they're equal. We could just as easily have looked at this triangle here and this triangle here, but we're going to focus on this triangle, uh, the triangle down the bottom, that looks something like that, and the triangle above it that looks something like that. Because then if we can prove that those are the same length and these ones are the same length, then we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to say that these the diagonals have indeed bisected each other, that this midpoint here has cut these two these lines direct in, this line evenly in two and this line evenly in two. So let's have a look at the angles. We know that this, uh, these two lines are parallel. They're, it's shown on our diagram that these two lines are parallel. So that means that the angle uh, BAE, so BAE, this angle here, this angle here, uh, is going to be the same as this angle here, DCE, DCE. 
Now the reason for that is we've got the Z rule, the, the, uh, the alternate angles, the uh, alternate angles uh, equal rule. If, if we've got two parallel lines, we know that the two angles that are, uh, that are opposite that line are equal. We've got one parallel line here, another parallel line here, okay, and we've got that line running straight through it. So we know that this angle is equal to this angle here. It's the Z rule. So angle BAE, angle BAE, so that's this angle here with A at the middle, all right, is equal to angle DCE, angle DCE, this angle here, DCE. Okay, so this is the angle that's made by those two lines. So those two angles we know are equal. We also know that if we're looking from the opposite direction, angle BAABE, this angle here, this one here, is going to be equal to angle RCDE, angle CDE, this angle here. Once again for the Z rule, because we've got, this time, we've got two parallel lines, two parallel lines, and another a line going right through it. So this angle is going to be the same as this angle. So we can see that these two angles are corresponding. These two angles are corresponding just like these two angles are corresponding. So it's beginning to look like we've got a triangle that's congruent to another triangle where all that's happened is it's been rotated. So it's been rotated downward um, to, make it, to, to have, make it the same triangle. We also know a third piece of information, uh, that AB equals CD. So AB, this length here, is equal to CD, this length here. And we know that because that's a, that's a parallelogram has equal signs. This side here is equal to this side here. So once again, it's showing that if we rotate it around, these two sides of, of, the, of the triangles are going to be corresponding. So you can see just my notation here, Angle BAE is equal to angle DCE because of the Z rule, uh, the, the alternating angles rule. Uh, angle ABE is equal to angle CDE, once again because of the alternating angles rule. And side AB is equal to side CD they're, because they're the equal side lengths from our parallelogram. So we know from that information uh, that we've got two corresponding angles that are equal and one corresponding side angle, angled side. So we've got two triangles that are congruent. We've got triangle ABE is congruent to triangle CDE. So rotating it around, we can see A and C are corresponding vertices, B and D are corresponding vertices, and E is the corresponding vertex for, for both of them. We can see that it's been rotated um, as if this is a, a pivot point, this is a swivel point around that. So therefore, that means that this side length here is going to be the same side uh, length as this one here. And this side length uh, here is going to be the same length as this side length here. Actually, I'm just going to give them, that'll be three and four, just so it doesn't confuse with the other ones. So these two side lengths are the same, and these two side lengths are the same. CE is equal to AE. CE is equal to AE. And DE, DE is equal to BE. So those two side lengths are the same. And because those halves of each diagonal are the same, that means the diagonals have bisected each other. This point cuts this line directly in two, into two even bits, and this point cuts this line into two even bits. So therefore, the diagonals bisect each other.